Hello and thank you for joining me today. We are going to be making an all-in-one diaper that is um, a diaper that has everything all sewn in together so you just put it on in one step. I've already done some pre-cutting to save some time. This is going to be my outer print and so I've already cut that out of pull. This is one of the Babyville prints. It's super cute. And this is just white pull right here and this is my pattern piece. This is the inner that's going to be cut out of bamboo. So I am going to cut this shape out of the middle of the white inner pull here. I've already kind of started. So there I have that. And now you're left with this kind of wiggly piece here. Now let me show you the pattern I'm basing this off of. This is a free pattern that I got from prefoldtofitted.blogspot.com. My good friend Allison, who goes by Arfi, put this together. And so this is her pattern for the actual diaper. I'm using my own diaper pattern but this is a great free pattern and then here is the template that I used for the inner cutout. You just cut this part out of the middle. I cut this piece of bamboo from that same excuse my wiggliness here from that same pattern but I cut it about a quarter inch bigger than the other piece. Because what I want to do is be able to lay this okay so now you can see how I have it laid my bamboo cut out and then my pull over top of it and you can see the shadow of the bamboo through and that's fine. I am now going to pin this in place so that I can move it to my sewing machine. If you've watched a lot of my other tutorials you know I am not generally somebody who pins but for this particular application it is important. Okay so there we have the bamboo pinned to the pull by the way, I have the pull with the laminated side down and the soft fabric side up. I'm now going to take this to the machine and sew this with a tight zigzag applique stitch. Okay, I am going to use a tight zigzag on my machine. That's this one, the number seven. And I want it to not be terribly wide, so I'm going to put this at a four. And one and a half is nice and tight stitch length, so that should be good. Got my piece all laid out here. It doesn't really matter where you start, but you want this zigzag to, now I know I'm dealing with white on white here, but you want the zigzag to go right at the cut line of the pole. Okay, let me pause and show you a part that I already did here. So there you can see the zigzag pretty good there. You can see that 
it just overlaps off the edge of the pole onto the bamboo and really secures this raw edge of the pole nicely. It's not a very long zigzag and it's nice and tight from side to side. So I am going to do this all the way around this whole thing and then we'll be back. Okay, so here I have my inner layer, the pole that is attached to that bamboo with my really tight zigzag stitch. And I am going to turn this over and as you can see, I didn't exactly line it up perfectly. So because you can see the white bamboo through the white pole, I'm going to go through and just snip off any of the extra bamboo so that it leaves a nice even shadow. Be careful when doing this so that you don't actually snip through your pole. That would be very upsetting. So I have trimmed off all the extra bamboo. That way from the front it looks nice and pretty. Up next I am going to work on the actual soaker pads that attach to this. So I'm going to turn off my machine because I'm done with my machine for a little bit. So our inner layer is done. I'm going to go cut the pieces. I'll be back. Okay so this pattern piece told me to cut a 4.75 by 14 inch pedal soaker. So that's what I did. I have two pedals that I'm gonna assemble now. And these are 4.75 by 14. I have one layer of heavy bamboo fleece, one layer of Zorb, and another layer of heavy bamboo fleece that I am going to pin together here so that they don't shift. And then another layer of heavy bamboo fleece. A layer of more bamboo. And this customer wanted a stay dry top. So um, that's why I'm comfortable I have these little bits of blue left over and I'm gonna go ahead and use the blue here because I know that I'm gonna cover it with this white suede cloth and you can't see the blue through it. So this will be my top layer that goes against the baby's skin so that um, the baby's parts will still stay dry. But all told, there are five pretty thirsty layers of absorbency here plus the base layer of bamboo. So that makes a total of six. That should be enough for most kids, especially because I'm using heavy bamboo fleece and Zorb, which are both materials that really pack a punch. If you have a serger, your fastest option is going to be to take these two pieces to the serger and go around the edges. If you don't have a serger, then you would use a zigzag stitch off the edge or an overcasting stitch if your machine has an overcasting foot. But I have a serger, so that's what I'm going to go do.
Okay, so here I am back at my inner layer. And, whoops, I forgot to trim off some strings here. And you are going to lay this out. One on top of the other. Now, since I have the one with the stay dry layer, that one is obviously going to be the one that's at the top. Otherwise, it wouldn't really matter what's the top and what's the bottom. But just make sure that they're lined up nice and even. And you have a couple options. You could do a zigzag stitch over the edge. Um, I'm going to choose not to do that. I'm just going to do a straight stitch right down here just because I, this is kind of a lot of layers for a zigzag stitch. Now again, you want to keep checking your positioning as you move these. You can try to pin it, but this is, again, a lot of layers to try to get a pin through. So just make sure everything still stayed where you wanted it to stay. If you have the option to put your needle down, now is when you want to use it. And go ahead and start. Do a back stitch to lock it into place. And then go through it. When you get to the edge, again, back stitch. Trim the threads later but so now we have the two layers are attached at the top if you want you could stop there and these would just kind of flop around um, and that would be fine I'm going for no floppage so I'm going to once again lay it out make sure everything is lined up to where I want it the reason I don't want these to flop around in my particular design is because my husband and my mother-in-law hate all in two diapers that have the flaps. They just, they can't figure it out. I don't understand why it's so confusing for them, but it is. So things either need to be sewn in place or in a pocket. So if I'm going to make an all-in-one for my family, it needs to be sewn down. stitch and for the beginning I'm really kind of trying to push this fabric through until the feed dogs can get a good grab at it now I'm not pushing anymore I'm letting the machine do the work I only had to push at the beginning back stitch Okay, trim off your threads, your inner layer is now complete. So I am going to turn off my machine for now fold this up and put it off to the side because now I'm going to go back to my outer layer and apply my snaps. Okay, so our next step is attaching these snaps 
and I have already marked my pattern with a disappearing marker. I don't know if you can see the little purple dots. So when I turn my pull over, I can still kind of see the dots through the back. You probably can't through the camera, but it at least allows me to see where I'm going here and just use a glue stick. Where my snaps are going to go. And then I glue another piece of pull. When you are going through two layers, like a hidden pull and a cotton outer, you don't need to do this. But when you're only going through one layer, you want to back your snaps. So the glue stick just kind of holds it in place so that you can push your snaps through with a snap press. If you've never seen a snap press, this is what one looks like. And you just take your awl, poke your hole where you've marked it. Push your snap through the back. down with two hands and there's your snap all right I'm gonna do this um 28 more times or 27 more times and I'll be back okay and we're back I am all done applying the snaps on this front side so we are going to pin this together and now the rest is gonna go really fast the prep work is what took the longest time especially making this inner here that's so lovely. You are going to turn your pieces so that the right sides face together and you're gonna have to maneuver a little bit because this is pretty thick here in the middle so you're gonna have to wiggle the pull around and you can use pins but I personally prefer to use Finder clips so that I don't leave any marks. And you're just going to go all the way around and secure these two together. And like I said, because of this bulge in the middle, um, don't be afraid to maneuver it a little bit so that it lines up nicely. Okay, my layers are now all pinned together, so I am going to start sewing. Now, you are sewing with pull side up, no matter which way you do it. And some machines have a really hard time with that. If yours does, you can take a little bit of baby powder and put it where you're going to be sewing, and that'll help the machine not stick. This Babyville pull is actually really quite good 
for sewing on. It's not sticky at all. I also have a Teflon um, coating on my foot so it doesn't stick. So that's another option. We are going to need to turn this later. So I am not going to sew this middle part closed. I'm going to leave this open for turning later. So I am going to start sewing mm, probably about three inches in here. And I use a quarter inch sewing allowance. Some people use a half inch. It's just a matter of personal preference. Do a quick back stitch when you start. And remember, because of the bulk that's in the middle here, your pull is going to shift. So don't be afraid to move it, shift it. So that your layers stay together. Like see how it's shifted here? I don't want that. So you gotta keep kind of babysitting it. And then I am going to bring this forward um, about three inches as well. And then back stitch. All right, trim off your threads. In a regular pocket diaper, I don't leave such a big gap, but because the inserts are already in here, it's kind of bulky to flip. You need a good amount of space. Um, you are going to want to trim off any extra from your seam allowance. If you did it right on a quarter inch, you should be good to go. But if there's any spots where it's a little uneven, or if you want to kind of trim up your corners, and your curves so that they fold out nicer. You can do that. Otherwise, we are ready to turn. So just stick your hand in there. I put my fingers in the wings. Pinch. And turn. And using your fingers, make sure all the seams If you're doing sharp corners like this, you might want to trim the corner. That way it 
pokes out nice. And you are ready to lay this out and mark your elastic placement. Now, I just kind of happen to know where my elastic placement is on mine, but otherwise, um, go grab your pattern and mark your elastic. Okay, I have marked my elastic placement, and I personally use four inches for the back and six inches for each leg. Each pattern will vary slightly, but that seems to be kind of standard. And there's three basic ways to do elastic. I do what's called a blind elastic. So I take the elastic, hold it in my fingers, and I shove it into the diaper. And with my finger, I just kind of match up the edge of the elastic with the line and pinch it. It's called blind elastic because I am doing this just with my fingers. I can't actually see. And then I go forward and backward a couple times on it. So that was the one side. Now I reach back in again, feel for the elastic, and bring it over to where my other elastic marking is. And again, just with my fingers. Tuck it into the crease and pinch it so that you can feel it through the layers of pull. Hold it into place and tack it down. Okay. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing for the legs. So that one side is tacked. I reach back in again, feel for the elastic, and pull it to my other spot. Feel for it with my fingers. do the other side of the elastic. I don't think you need to see that. Okay, so your diaper kind of looks like a mess right now because the elastic is just bunching it all together weirdly. And the way that you really bring it all together into a nice professional product is with your top stitching. So that's what we're going to do next. I personally always start at my right hand corner and this is where you want to take the most time of all because this is really what's going to separate the pros from the amateurs here is how good your top stitching is. You want to find a width that's nice and comfortable for you 
and use your finger on the inside to make sure that all of the edges are pressed out nicely. And just try to be really consistent with your width on the outside. If you need to slow your machine down, go for it. Slow it down. When you get to that spot where you sewed your elastic, you're going to pivot it and turn it sideways. Go in about a quarter of an inch and pull so that you can pinch the elastic in between your fingers here because you want the elastic and these soaker pads here out of the way and pull nice and tight and sew your casing for your elastic. So I've got one hand behind, one hand in front. I'm using my finger to hold that elastic out of the way so that it does not get caught in the stitch. And then stop where you reach that other mark of where your other elastic was. Go back in and continue with your top stitching. Okay, so I have top stitched all around the diaper, repeating the process for all of the elastic casings. And I am back to my front where I had that huge opening. So I've got those couple inches on the side where they are sewn together. And then you want to fold whoops, these pieces together and you kind of have to eyeball it a little bit and kind of have a feel for how much you're going to have to fold so that it matches. And just hold it down with your fingers and sew it closed. Definitely want to make sure you're folding over enough that you're actually going to catch it. When I first started sewing, that was something that I didn't do very well. And then after the first wash, 
This hole would pop right back open. And nobody wants that. Now I'm right back to where I started. I'm going to pivot it and just do a back stitch real quick. To lock all this in place. Okay, that looks very nice. You can shut off your machine because if you're doing snaps, you are done sewing. Now you want to go through this whole diaper and cut off any extra little pieces. Like I always really check where I did my elastic so that I don't have any of these sticking out. Trim all those. But you can see how nice it looks on the inside with your layer of pull all the way around and your bamboo inner. It's kind of hard because it's all white, but it looks really nice. Okay, all my threads are trimmed. Now, the really nice thing about this design is because it is pull all around the outside. You could even do a full cotton outer and hit and pull and you should be safe because this right here is all pull on the inside so there shouldn't be any chance for wicking which is great now the last thing I have to do is fold this up and mark my snap placement on my wings I'm just going to use my marker and mark my snaps and then I'll be done. Okay, and there you have it. You're finished all in one diaper. All of your layers are sewn in together. This looks really nice. And there's our finished product. Thank you for joining me today.